Simon. So yeah, welcome to uh, session two on vehicle dynamics. Okay, uh, this is a should be some of it should be um, familiar from last year, um, perhaps a little bit more um, uh, in depth. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so that's so on single degree of freedom vibrations. Next week we'll just, we'll continue chapter two. Okay, because chapter two is quite a big chapter as you probably had a look at in the notes. Okay, um, and uh, and we're going to do the second part next week. After that, we'll do some multiple degrees of freedom stuff, talking about some stuff to do with um, uh, actual sort of vehicle dynamics in there with uh, with um, quarter car models and that sort of stuff. And then, um, and then obviously we can dive into more um, sort of yeah, vehicle specific stuff to do with, uh, with cars and stuff the following week. Anyway, so that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Interesting. Right. So. The outline for the session, <coughs> talk about the learning objectives for this chapter, um, the undamped free oscillation, um, force oscillation, and then we'll talk about damped free oscillation. This is the whole chapter. Damped force we'll do next week, okay, and, mm -hmm. and some other stuff on top of that, okay. We're not going to do that today. So, basically the learning objectives for chapter two, the whole of chapter two, is familiar, become familiar with the forms and solutions for both free and force undamped and damped single degree of freedom systems. So it's four equations basically, depending on what sort of system you're dealing with. And you know, have an understanding or at least a familiarity with how they've been derived. I'm not going to be assessing you on deriving them, okay? So I'm not going to say, you know, how do you derive X and Y equation or whatever, okay? It's mainly about understanding where they come from. Um, <coughs> but then it's about, we're going to focus on how we actually use them. <clears throat> so when you're presented with a problem, clearly you need to identify what sort of problem it is. And then once you know what sort of problem it is, you can then um, uh, determine the correct form of solution, um, which is important. And for four systems, okay, um, the amplitude ratio varies with different flowing frequencies. That's something that we'll look at um, when, we, when we look at four systems um, this week and next week when we deal with four systems. Uh, damp systems, okay, because it's quite interesting how that works, and then also be able to convert solutions from one form to another using some trigonometry, trigonometric identities, okay, uh, because there are different ways of representing the same equation depending on what you're doing. Um, it might be helpful in one way or another, and obviously that again is also going to be focused on next week. So we'll start off with the most basic form of oscillation, which is free oscillation of an undamped system, okay. Um, this is often a note called simple harmonic motion or simple harmonic oscillation, okay? And we start off with basically this equation is a sinusoid, and any sinusoid that centers around the zero, okay, uh, can be represented with this equation, okay? A sinusoid will have an amplitude, which is a, a big, how high the, um, the sinusoid is, how big it is, okay? And there's a frequency, which is how quickly the, um, uh, the sinusoid goes, so obviously if this if this value is very low, then it's a very low frequency. If it's very high, then it's a very high frequency. And then this, this thing at the end, which is an angle, okay, is known as the phase angle. Basically, if you've got your sinusoid of a certain amplitude and a certain frequency, but it needs to move left and right, then this is the number that varies that. Okay. So any sinusoid that centers around zero okay, can be represented with this equation. There's another form of this equation, which we'll talk about next week. It's got two terms, but it's the same equation, basically. Any sinusoid can have that format. So A is the amplitude of oscillation, how big it is, the largest displacement. Amplitude is measured from the middle to the top or the middle to the bottom in terms of magnitude, how big it is. Okay, not from top to bottom. Okay, so from the equilibrium to the peak <coughs> or the equilibrium to the trough. <coughs> omega naught, so this is not W, this is omega. Okay, if you say W, I'll correct you. Omega naught is the angular frequency of oscillation measured in radians per second, okay? That's important. Make sure when you're doing your calculations on your calculator that you've got your calculator set in radians, okay? Because it's very important you've got the right there. Thing. So radians per second, okay, omega naught. And that's the natural frequency. Um, and for an undamped system, uh, the natural frequency, um, the undamped natural frequency always has a suffix naught in my, in my notes, okay? Sometimes when you're reading other texts, I may say N for natural, okay? I'm even going to use omega naught. And I'll talk about what I'm using N for later on. In the, in the, uh, no, in fact, don't worry about that because I'm not going to be teaching that content. But N I use for another uh, purpose. 
And then this angle at the end, I've used the Greek letter phi. It could be another Greek letter, okay? Um, and in fact, when we're dealing with damp systems, I use alpha, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's a phase angle, and that can shift the thing left and right such that when t equals zero, you might not be at the beginning, at the, you know, the top of the amplitude, you might be in the middle. In which case, phase phi is going to have a value, or likewise, it might not be anywhere near either of the things, so you can shift the thing left and right by a different amount by changing the phi. So it compensates for the correct position when t is zero, which is how you set it up. So if we take omega naught as the angular frequency, the, the period, okay, which is the which is the time taken for one oscillation, so from peak to peak or trough to trough, or centre point to centre point, okay, is denoted by two pi divided by omega. That's just a sort of a definition, okay. But you can work it out because the frequency of os oscillation in measure in hertz. We know that in one radian there are two pi. Sorry, in one in one complete circle there's two pi radians. So if you take, to, to get you know, the circle of, I also mean cycle, cycle of oscillation. So if we divide the omega by 2 pi, we get the frequency, okay, which is uh, cycles per second. And to work out how many seconds one cycle is, you, do, you, you turn that upside down, 1 over t, and obviously if you turn this upside down, you get that. Okay, so they're all linked together, all three of these sort of different terms. So a picture or schematic of a simple harmonic oscillator is a mass spring system, okay? So we've got the mass of a spring. Uh, when, e when x is zero, and obviously you're in equilibrium position, nothing's happening. But if you pull the mass back by distance x, you're going to have a system. When you let go, it's going to start oscillating, okay? The spring is connected between the mass and we call this bit ground, okay? Although this bit is vertical, that we call, still call that ground, because it's all connected to ground, it doesn't move, okay? It's so massive that it doesn't have no impact on what's going on, and obviously the mass can move left and right in this case with no uh, friction at all, no damping at all, okay? So when, like I said, when you apply um, a uh, displacement, okay, to the mass, you increase x of t um, such that you're creating a, a, a potentially important let go, the thing's going to start oscillating backwards and forwards. Okay, so. so if we apply Newton's second law to the system, okay, Due to the second law, you should remember from level one, the sum of all the forces must equal mass times acceleration, okay? We're dealing with one, one element, okay? And so the only force that's being applied to that, that mass, if you look at the, if you did the free body diagram of that mass, okay? So if I could do a free body diagram, so I'll do it on the next slide. You've got your, your mass, okay? You've only got one force being applied, so we're saying x is this way, and the force that's being applied is F S. Okay. So the mass times acceleration is going to be the spring force, okay? The minus sign is because um, the spring force is always opposed motion. We're saying x is positive this way, the spring force is going to apply in the opposite direction. But likewise, if x is this way, the spring force will be in the opposite direction. So mx double dot equals minus kx. Let's stick all the x terms on one side, we end up with this second order differential equation, and then you can divide everything by n to get x double dot plus k upon n times by x equals zero. Okay? So that's the sort of basic maths behind it all. And if you went through the motions, you can actually show that this is the solution to this equation. Okay? If you took this thing and stuck it in from where you've got x, you take the second derivative of this and stuck it in from where you've got x double dot, okay? you'd actually end up with an equation where omega naught equals root k upon m. Okay? And like I said, that's the natural frequency of root k upon m, um, and that would be a solution to that. Okay. So, I think... So this is checking this, like I said, so if you take the second derivative of that, you end up with minus omega squared north squared coming out, a cosine of So that is at the same as x, we've replaced it there. You stick that into the equation, okay, there it is. 
So we stick the centre back to the dot into the equation, okay, and the end obviously on the bottom, and if you rearrange this equation, you can find that omega naught here equals uh, root kappa. So the first thing past question. So in the notes, when you if you look to the notes, you'll see that um, there are some gaps in the notes. Okay, those gaps are associated with um, in-class questions. Let's see what happens if I click this button. I don't know whether it works. No, obviously this is the PC. This way. Okay. So anyway, um, you'll see there's some notes. There's some gaps in the notes. If you've printed out the notes, that's a good thing. Okay, um, but if not, then you can just take the notes of this. So the in-class question we've got is a car of mass 1,500 kilograms is designed to have a natural body. Okay, so which is known as body bounce in, in dynamics. Uh, frequency of 1.5 hertz, that's quite a good number because that, that is um, in terms of the frequencies that we want for body bounce, um, you want it to be almost in line with the natural uh, frequency of somebody walking. Okay, um, and that, you know, if, it's, if you've got a different frequency, let's see if you're too high or too low, you end up with um, problems in terms of like, getting car sick and everything. So, anyway, natural body bounce of 1.5 hertz. What is the effective stiffness of the tyre, wheel, and suspension assembly to meet this requirement? So the bit between the body and the ground. Okay, what's the effective stiffness? And so we've got omega naught. I've, so I've given you F naught, which is 1.5 hertz. Okay, so obviously we can work out what omega naught should be by multiplying that by two, two pi. That was the relationship we had. And if you did that sum. That's 2 pi times by 1.5. That comes out to be 9.42. Okay. 9.4248 maybe. So we've got to make a naught. So we know that make a naught is root. K upon n, but we need to rearrange for k. So that's going to be omega naught squared times by n. If you rearrange that equation, multiply square both sides, and then multiply both sides by n, you end up with k on its own. Okay, and so we can we know those we know both of those things. This is a nine point four two four eight. Squared times by fifteen hundred. So we end up with the effective stiffness of that of the bit between the body and the ground and the body of the car, the chassis of the car, and the ground. So this is ignoring unspun masses, okay? 133 kilonewtons per meter. Okay. <coughs> so it's not a problem where I've given you um, mass and stiffness and said so work out what the omega naught is. Okay, I've given you omega naught, I've given you the mass, and I've asked you to find the stiffness. So it's just like I said, a Rearrangement of these two terms, but I gave you the frequency in hertz, so you'd have to convert it to 